And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Wednesday, October 24th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories we read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com, and here are some of those news stories for the day. New voter identification laws in a dozen states could negatively affect voter participation in Native American and Alaskan Native communities, a tribal advocacy group says. The National Congress of American Indians, or NCAI, released a report on October 22nd that highlights the states, including somewhere photo identification will be required at the polls on election day. Two of those states, Alaska and Florida, do not list tribal IDs as acceptable forms of identification at the polls. Problems with other new voter ID laws include requirements that voters provide their home addresses, where some tribal communities have no street addresses, and the barriers of cost, logistics, and distance to obtaining required identification cards, according to the study. NCAI President Jefferson Keel said that there are races around the country that could hinge on the native vote, and he wants to assure he wants to ensure no one is disenfranchised by the new laws. He discussed the report at the agency's annual convention being held in Sacramento, California. Family members of Russell Means are planning four services to honor the former American Indian Movement activist. Means, an Oglala Sioux, an actor, died at home on the Pine Ridge Reservation on October 22nd. He was 72. There will be four services representing, amongst other things, the Four Seasons. The first ceremony to honor Means was scheduled for October 24th at the Little Wound School in Kyle on the Pine Ridge Reservation. Three more ceremonies will take place next year. One will be at the site of the 1973 Wounded Knee Occupation. Another will be at Wind Cave National Park. And finally, Means' ashes are to be scattered in the Black Hills. And today, we talk with Mark Crayant about the latest trends in the presidential election. Thanks for joining with us today, Mark Trehant from the uh, Fort Hall Shoshone Bannock Reservation. Uh, last two weeks, uh, actually uh, 13 days until the presidential vote, people are voting all over the country. We have a hot, hot race going on. Uh, what are your ob observations? And maybe we'll start out with the real light stuff today. Uh, Donald Trump had a great big announcement that he thought he would change the whole world. Uh, what was that all about? Well, I have to say, um, I've been doing an interview with a Polish journalist for the last two hours, so I missed the announcement. I'm going to have to go back and look after this. Well, I'll tell you what it was. Uh, Obama, I mean, excuse me, Trump challenged the President Obama to release his college transcripts, and he would pay five million dollars to Obama's charity choice. I see. Now, is that a bombshell? That's uh, pretty typical. It's it's pretty goofy. I mean, when you think about it, aside from all the theatrics and politics and, th and uh, personalities, this boils down to a really interesting choice between two very different philosophies about the direction of the United States. One believes government should be uh, have a pretty significant role. The other believes the uh, private sector should be the primary driver and government less. And that ought to be the debate instead of all this goofy stuff. Um, so, I did want to mention something about the, the Polish journalists. For whatever reason, Fort Hall, Idaho is becoming an international media capital. Uh, last week we had uh, Belgium radio, today Poland, and uh, next week New Zealand television. So... Uh, uh, well, uh, let's ask this question. Um, my understanding is uh, people looking in from throughout the world have uh, some very strong opinions about the difference between Romney and Obama. Uh, have you studied that at all? Yeah, it's very significant. Um, the The numbers I saw were about, as put it this way, Indian country probably votes uh, 10 to 1 Democrat across the country if you average it all out. Uh, international uh, that would be a low turnout for Obama. It's more like 50 to 1. <laughs> well, uh, he has very broad international support. Most people in the world think he's done a pretty good job, given the hand he's been dealt over the last four years. That's interesting that the foreign observers would put so much credibility in his hands, and he 
doesn't seem to be able to find that in the United States. Um, so let's agree that whatever Trump had to say was about more Trump than uh, Obama or Romney on, on this day. Right. And let's go into what's happened. Obama seemed to have a, a, a reasonable lead, one that had five or six different ways to uh, the presidency uh, prior to the first debate. The first deb debate, uh, uh, Romney was declared uh, the winner uh, and things began to change. You didn't find that all that surprising. Tell no, us. I think the country was divided before the debate and was divided after the debate. I think the polling probably just indicated more attention than it did a significant shift. I really think the election now boils down to a couple of states and you're in one of them. Uh, I think what happens in Ohio and Wisconsin, you don't have to look anywhere else, and those two states will tell you what the outcome of the election will be. Well, let's take a peek at uh, what Wisconsin is today. Wisconsin is uh, polling, uh, the latest poll is a 49.8% poll, but he's had a couple 50 and 51s. The projected vote total in Wisconsin as of today is 513 with an 81% chance that it's going to be uh, Obama that uh, takes Wisconsin and gets their delegates. Ohio, uh, by the way, which has teetered on the uh, on the edge of all these uh, projections and everyone seems to be uh, looking at, and I can't find right now, here is running with about a 50.3% advantage to Obama in the polls that are coming in. In fact, uh, polling average is 48.1 to 45.2. There's still a gap of under, uh, independents and undecided voters there. Projected vote total at this point in Ohio by Obama is 50.3 with, a, again, a 70% chance of winning the race. If those two states are instrumental, um, we could assume that uh, Obama probably has the electoral college vote. He has a very strong case to win in the Electoral College. Uh, at this point in the election, really the polls are um, not quite meaningless, but it really boils down to uh, what the get-out-the-vote operation is. Uh, political people call it the ground game, making sure that your voters are the ones who shows up, and that's really the whole race right now. One of the things that Obama has done four years ago and he's doing again is to try to get people to vote early. Uh, he rolls up a huge, they call it banking votes, but a huge early advantage by getting people to vote early. So they don't forget on election day or the weather doesn't turn bad or whatever crops up. And uh, Republicans tend to have a much better get out the vote operation for election day itself. So that's what the two kind of things are uh, playing out now. People were fairly impressed with the early vote for Obama four years ago. Have the Republicans learned how to utilize that get-out-the-vote uh, tactic? Are we, are we seeing in a reflection of the early vote? Definitely. Well, the, the, if the polls are right, the early vote so far is about two to one Obama. Uh, but that said, the Republicans are much better at early voting than they were four years ago, and they realize now that it's the game. In the election uh, four years ago, 30% of the country early. This time it's probably going to be 40, maybe even close to half. That's how big it is. Well, that's interesting, which means that on election day, half, uh, perhaps close to half of the population ha will have already cast a vote. Um, when you see this polarization in the state, uh, how do you characterize uh, those areas? And uh, I just wanted to let you know, yesterday I was reading an article that said not only that, there was about 106 counties in the country that the campaigns have focused on as the important counties, not even the states, and that three of them in northwest Wisconsin, Burnett, Sawyer, which we reside in, and Washburn County, two of them have Indian reservations in it. What's going to be the Indian Reservation uh, vote, or just let's say the tribal vote uh, this year in terms of impact? If we turn out 1.5%, is that going to be a factor in the overall election? Yeah, we turn out 1.5%. I mean, as a total of the pie, uh, that would be huge. Uh, unfortunately, Indian country uh, just doesn't vote in enough numbers. Um, the turnout is abysmal. If we can get the turnout to be even matching the general population, uh, it will push a lot of the candidates over the finish line. And I think that's going to be that, just to try to get to 50, 60, 70% of the possible 
registered vote. Uh, some tribes in North Dakota, for example, they actually have close to 90% turnout. And if you could replicate that across Indian country, it would be incredibly powerful. Those counties you mentioned in Wisconsin are certainly uh, good ones to watch. Also, with Arizona, um, there was a column in the New York Times today that said right now Arizona is not in play, but if the Latino vote and the Native vote gear up and turn out in the numbers that they've always talked about, that changes and Arizona would be in play. The other, uh, in fact, Arizona has turned pink from red, which means that actually the polls are beginning to show a little bit of a pull away from Romney. The other state that turned pink rather than red was Montana. And I believe all those states, including Wisconsin, have senatorial candidates running as well, which could mean a difference in the control of the United States Senate. Uh, what are you seeing with those votes? Anything in particular that uh, tells you that something might happen uh, in any of those states? Oh, absolutely. There's intense races in all three states. Um, uh, really strong candidates uh, in all three races, which is uh, making it much more competitive than anyone thought. Really, the Republicans had a great advantage going into this election to take the Senate. And it seems now that they've lost that with a combination of really weak candidates and a combination of some uh, really goofy mistakes uh, and, and actually serious mistakes both in Indiana and Missouri with candidates saying just atrocious things about women, abortion and rape. My understanding is that statement by the Republican senatorial candidate in Indiana may cost uh, the Republicans the election down there. Uh, Very well could. Saying that uh, somehow uh, when a woman is raped that that's what God wanted. Right. Essentially. Um, interesting data coming in today from Virginia. Virginia now has, uh, Obama has a 51% chance. Again, you say don't read the polls, and I agree with you that those polls move back and forth. But uh, Virginia had teetered over into the Obama uh, category for some time. It seems to be uh, uh, coming back a little bit. Today's uh, polls got uh, Obama running about a point ahead. Anything you see in Virginia that might change the dynamics? Is, is that early vote? Is that a population shift? That seems that it used to be a fairly Republican uh, state. Am I wrong about that? Uh, to tell you how close Virginia is, in the debate Monday night, uh, Romney was talking about uh, building a better Navy and a bigger Navy, that was all about Virginia. In Virginia, they build ships. And uh, he wants people who build ships to think there are more jobs coming from the War Department. And uh, that's all about that very, very close state. Obama, on the other hand, I think his best case is that uh, austerity will cause the federal government to shrink. And you look at Northern Virginia, and it's basically populated by uh, civil service employees. And so even though that group tends to favor Republicans, there's hope that this time around they may rethink it and uh, vote with the Democrats. And someone has pointed out that uh, they still u actually do utilize bayonets on some guns. So what state uh, produces bayonets? Do you know where, that, where that vote's going <laughs> to come from? I didn't look up. <laughs> we're, we're down into micromanaging these little issues. Uh, like you said, that, you know, the auto industry... Uh, the recitation by Obama, even of a story of someone coming out of Ohio, those were all directed toward those small constituencies, uh, micro groups within micro groups uh, at this particular point. Florida appears to be somewhat out of reach for some reason, except that uh, the polling average has Romney ahead by 0.6, uh, shorter than 1% of the vote. Is it possible that that could shift with some of Obama's statements on Israel, for example? Israel could be a factor in Florida, but so could uh, Medicare and Medicaid. And as people uh, get to the polling booth, if they actually think about the implication for their programs, because you have so many seniors in Florida, uh, that could actually shift. Right now, again, seniors tend to be a, a pretty reliable Republican group. So if you can even cut that by a few percentage points, it might be enough to shift the balance of the state. Uh, Predict-wise, today has Obama at 281 with Romney at 257. Virginia still goes to uh, Romney. New Hampshire is a toss-up, and uh, Colorado is a toss-up there very close as well, too. Um, what You know, it's a practically a tie in Colorado as well. Is there anything that could shift Colorado? There. Latino vote. If the Latino turns out, Colorado is Obama's. 
It's not a question of who they'll vote for, it's whether they'll vote. Well, we have any other words of wisdom today for the people out there. For those people that follow politics, they're all sitting on the edge, either they're a Republican, Democrat, or whoever they are. Yeah, my, and my fear is that those who don't love politics will find that on Election Day it's not over. If we've got a couple states that have to do recounts, and uh, we might be going into the Electoral College month of December and still not know who the next president is, if it's this really this close. And that's uh, not always the most uh, best best scenario. You painted a scenario of a p potential tie at one point. I mean, I, I could play with this a little bit, but I don't uh, uh, see that. that. But that includes, that puts New Hampshire into play, doesn't it? Right. Yeah, a tie is definitely possible. Uh, the one that I think is more possible than a tie is to have Obama win the Electoral College but lose the popular vote, uh, a reverse of Gore and Bush. Right. And there shouldn't be any complaints about that because uh, uh, Bush won over Gore. Uh, Gore won the popular vote. Bush won the electoral vote with those 400 Florida uh, chads, hanging chads, if I remember right. Um, where do you see that happening this time? In Ohio, uh, that close uh, call? or I don't think Ohio will be close. Um, it could happen in Florida again. It could uh, happen in Virginia. It could happen in um, Colorado. It could happen in Nevada. It's going to be a long night. Uh, we might check in with you next week and get an update if anything earth crashing happens from, for example, uh, Obama does release his uh, college transcripts and and $5 million go to Obama's charity. My understanding is Gloria Allred is in a Boston, Massachusetts court today trying to get something out that people said was be of interest to those people who want to get something on Romney. So um, a tit for a tat, I guess. Okay. How's your corn? All harvested and put away? All harvested and um, I'm about to put it uh, either in the grinder or in the seed for next year. All right. Sounds good, Mark. Thanks for the discussion. And uh, if you have any earth crashing... Uh, uh, forecast coming up, get a hold of us. Sounds good. And that is another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to say miigwech for joining with us and come back again soon.